Hello everyone. It has been a while. Um, I'm Shandria. This is Shandria Carol Stitches. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for deciding to check out one of my videos. And if you're returning, thank you so much. I really appreciate you deciding to come back and see what I've been up to. It's been about a month since my last video and I have worked on a lot. <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and dive right into it because I have a table full of things to show. <laughs> um, first, I didn't finish anything. Um, I've worked on a lot of prog a lot of different projects, but each one of them has a small amount of progress. So no finishes. Um, so for whips, the first ones I want to show you are my February whip go finishes, um, and then I will talk about a different category, which should be all the rest. So for February, um, I had two WhipGo calls. Um, if you're not familiar with WhipGo, it is the brainchild of Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. Um, you can Google to find out, but well, look her up on YouTube to find out more about that. But essentially it is a bingo board for your whips, um, your works in progress, um, just to help you decide what to focus on um, if you are having trouble. Uh, so for February, my two calls were, I'm not kidding, I'm having to reach across the table here. So many things to show you. So the two projects that I had were um, Stardew Valley Christmas by Glitch Stitch AU. This is what it will look like. It's a full coverage piece. I will pop up a photo of what it looked like the last time I showed you, which would be in my last video. And I believe I did um, about another thousand stitches after I showed you. So this is where we are at now. I was able to, so my, my whip go goals are for a thousand stitches per project, um, but because this one is um, two over one tenth stitch on 25 count Lugana, um, it's only half a stitch. So I decided to try to get 2000 stitches in which would be a thousand full crosses. And I did, um, mainly because I got tired of confetti in the cabin and switched over to uh, Sky, which was a lot of fill in and went really fast. So I'll get you a little closer. Yeah, so this is the edge and it goes in a circle. So, um, so yeah, I've hit that edge on this side. Let me pull up the project stats. Okay, so I'm at 14.6% on this. Uh, it has 19,113 stitches and I'm 2,786 stitches. And I will put these away momentarily, so they're going on the floor for now. <laughs> um, the other WhipGo project is Holiday Quaker by Leela Studio, which looks like this. I will pop up a photo of what I had last time. And then here is where 
we are now. So this is a thousand more stitches of holiday quaker. I love this fabric. This is 18 count glass elevator by Forbidden Fiber Co. I'll get the project stats. So this one has 18,859 stitches. I have 1,228 which means I am 6.5% done. Okay, so I finished those in February and I had mentioned that I had planned on doing the Fandom Stitching Central's version of March Stitchy Madness which I believe was originally um, thought up by the Steel City Stitchers. Um, it's a play on the bracket, which is used for like March Madness and basketball. I, I, don't, I don't care about that, but, <laughs> but the stitching version, um, yeah. So I put together a bracket, um, a lot of, People do eight whips, but I did the full bracket of 16 whips. Um, and depending on, um, so you stitch them in order by day. So day one through 16. And which one gets the most stitches out of the pairing for that bracket moves on to the next round. Uh, so I have a total of 16 different whips that I'm going to show you. Um, I can tell you the progress that I got on each one of them, and then I'll tell you the um, if it went on or not. So the ones that went on, you should be seeing a bracket here. This should make a lot more sense with uh, with a with a diagram. <laughs> uh, but the eight that won out of this first batch of sixteen, I will be continuing to work on for the next eight days. Then we will have four, two, and one, um, and that will take me every single day in March. I have had so much progress this month so far, thanks to this. So it's working well. <laughs> um, okay, so day one was Templar Prophecy by Long Dog Samplers. That, uh, I'll pop up the cover photo to make this easier and faster on myself. Um, I'll pop up a photo of where it was when I started. And then I will show you where we are now. So this is stitched on 18 count Ada that I coffee tea dyed myself. And the floss is Old World by Stitchy Stuff Co. on Etsy. So I was able to do 373 stitches on this one. Okay, so day number two was Lovely Gnomes by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I'll pop up the cover photo. And then I'll pop up what it looked like prior to my stitching. And then here is what it looks like now. Let's see. So I have a uh, couple of nomads. <laughs> uh, 
I was able to do 315 stitches on this one. So this is stitched on 32 count Anemone Lugana by B Stitch Me. The needle binder is um, from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher, which actually, I guess I can go back and tell you the needle binder. For Templar Prophecy, this is a custom Scooby Doo needle binder from a friend of mine um, who runs Elkhorn Lab on Etsy. On this one, this is from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And this one for Holiday Quaker is uh, from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, they work with a needle runs through. Okay, so back to Lovely Gnomes. This one has a total of 2,878 stitches. I have stitched 419 total, which puts me at 14.6%. Okay, next is the Adams Family Stitch Along. I think that's just the title. It's by Just Stitch Design on Etsy. So I'll pop up the cover photo. This one is not gonna have a before photo because there was one stitch. <laughs> but that's not worth a before photo. And here is where we are now. I was able to get 435 stitches. This is stitched on 28 count Be Stitch Me in the um, Linen in the Color Fall. This needle minder, um, mm, it's from a Black Needle Society um, Halloween, one of the Halloween boxes. I think it's by Wild Violet Co. Something like that. <laughs> uh, I will try to find it and link it below though. I always try to link um, the makers for the things that I talk about down below. So if you ever have any questions, check that out. Uh, okay, so I had the 435 stitches on this. Uh, it has a total of 50,537 stitches. My 435 stitches on it puts me at 0.9%. <laughs> this is a very large project. <laughs> but I love it, and I don't care how long it takes me. It makes me so happy every time I look at it. <laughs> I love the Adams family. And I have been uh, lax in telling you which one is moving on. Out of the Templar Prophecy and Lovely Gnomes, Templar Prophecy is moving on. Um, and then for project number four, it is Luna Love by Sprouting Lupine. Through the pattern, right there. Okay. So, Real Love by Sprouting Lupine. I am doing a color conversion on this, which is very heavily inspired by Julie from Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. It uh, uses all of her like teal colors. Um, but I did change up a few, um, and then I also am using some of the color floors. So this is the color scheme that I'm using. Oh. 
you can see my progress there, but that's the color scheme. And um, so I'll pop up the before photo, which actually no, I won't because this was a new start. So you haven't seen anything on this yet. Um, and then here is where I am at now. I have a very good chunk of a moth wing. I was able to get 506 stitches in this. Um, this needle minder I made myself. Uh, it's a little chunk of bow from Final Fantasy. And this is 18 count Da Vinci Ada from Picture This Plus. So this one has a total of 7,499 stitches. I have 500 and, no, 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 I have 613. I had a few in it um, at the end of the month from February when I started it. So I have a total of 613 stitches in this and that puts me at 8.2%. Out of these two projects for the bracket, Adam's Family and Luna Love, Luna Love is moving on, and I'm, so I will get more progress on that one. The next one is The Greenhouse of Oddities by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. I will pop up a before photo. And here is what it looks like now. That's all in progress there. So this is stitched on 32 count Water Spirit by Seraphim Fabrics. Yes. Um, I was able to do 277 stitches on this. This project has a total of 15,905. I have a total in it of 485, which puts me at 3%. The needle minder on that was also a custom from my friend at Alcorn Lab. Um, the next project is Lovebirds by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I will pop up a cover photo. I will show you where it was last time. And then here is where it is now. You will have to forgive the dangling of string. <laughs> so I was able to get 279 stitches in this one. For Stitchy Madness. This is 32 count Crimson Peak Lugana by Jody of the Steel City Stitchers. Uh, this needle minder is from Be Stitch Me. This project has a total of 4,318 stitches. I have stitched 1,054, which puts me at 24.4%. Out of those two projects, which were Greenhouse of Oddities and Lovebirds, Lovebirds is moving on. So the 
Next project is Borsch by Alforest Embroidery. I will pop up a cover photo. Also a photo of where it was last time. And then here is where I am. <laughs> I went from just having a little turnip in the middle to having part of a pot. <laughs> and lots of fabric to wrangle. So the needle minder for this one uh, matches the project. I got the full kit from Al Forest Embroidery. So I believe this is just a Zweigart linen. Um, couldn't tell you the color, it came in the kit. So again, with the kit, I have all of the Al Forest flosses. And I absolutely am loving the variegation on that red. So I was able to get 240 stitches on this one. This project has a total of 16,572 stitches. I have stitched 323, putting me at 1.9%. The next project is My Mushy Valentine by Sprouting the Pie. This one was a new start, so there won't be a before photo. Where I am now. Try to get rid of that lovely crease. It's the top of a mushroom head. <laughs> this uh, this needle minder is from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. This is thirty two count Luna Moth fabric uh, linen by Be Stitch Me. I was able to get 400 stitches, which is most of this mushroom here. Um, this project has a total of 6,548 stitches. My 400 stitches on it have me at 6.1%. Out of those two projects, Borsch and My Mushy Valentine, My Mushy Valentine won, so I will get more progress on it. The next project is Cozy Cafe by the Frosty Pumpkin Stitchery, which looks like this. I will pop up a photo of what it looked like last time that you saw it, which was next to nothing. And here is what it looks like now. So I was able to get 244 stitches on this. This needle minder is from a, I made it myself from a pin by Ghoulish Bunny Studios. Check the back. Uh, this is 32 count Chai Love You linen, opal linen, um, by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. Apologize for the cap. So this project has a total of 12,966 stitches. I have a total of 491 stitches in it, which 
puts me at 3.8%. The next project is Monsieur Caramia, Caramia um, by the Witchy Stitcher, which looks like this. Another Adams Family pattern. So this one is a new start since you saw it last, so there won't be a before photo, but I had worked on it prior to um, Stitchy Madness. So for Stitchy Madness, I was able to put in 248, but obviously there's a lot more in this. But this is what it looks like now. So this is 32 count Life's of Peach Linen by Be Stitch Me. The needle binder is from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This project has a total of 2,484 stitches. I have a total of 1,515 stitches, putting me at 61% done. Love it so much. Um, I had wanted to be done by now. Life conspired against me but it will be done relatively soon because I love it so much. So of those two projects, which were Cozy Cafe and Monsher Caramia, um, Monsher won, so I will be getting more progress on that one. coming up soon. Next, we have The Year of the Dragon by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I believe this is a new start since you saw me last. I had done a little on it before March Stitchy Madness, though. So for March Stitchy Madness, I was able to get 279 stitches. And here's where we are now. The needle minder is from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery as well. This is lightly salted, not roasted linen, 32 count by Be Stitch Me. So this project has a total of 2,341 stitches. I have stitched 589, putting me at 25.2%. Next, we have In This For Normal by Hands On Design. So these were from um, a series called the Polar Plunge series. Most of them you buy as printed copies, but this one was a charity pattern, so you can get it as a PDF from her website. I will show you what it looked like last time, which I believe was just one of the normals. So I was able to do 270 stitches. This is 32 count Sea Spray Linen by Seraphim Fabrics. The needle liner is from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. This one only has 988 stitches in the pattern. I have stitched 
437, which puts me at 44.2%. Of those two patterns, which were Year of the Dragon and In This for Narwhal, Year of the Dragon won, so I will get more progress on that one. We're down to four. <laughs> so the next pattern is Christmas Reed by the Frost Company Stitchery. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I will pop up a cover photo, what it looked like last time. And then here is what we have now. I was able to do 300 stitches. This one, the needle minder, is from Frost Pumpkin Stitchery. Uh, it is on 32 count Vintage Country Mocha Lugano. This project has a total of 18,358 stitches. I have done 425, <laughs> which puts me at 2.3%. Next is To All a Good Night by Autumn Lane Stitchery, which looks like this. I will pop up a photo of where it was last time. And here is where we are now. I was able to do 401 stitches. The needle minder is from the Rebel Stitcher. This is 28 count opal, white opal linen. This project has a total of 18,000 Right, what? No, sorry. Don't mind me. I thought that was a little big. This pro project has a total of 5,166 stitches. I have stitched 932, which puts me at 18%. That's a lot. So of those two projects, Christmas Wreath and To All A Good Night, To All A Good Night won, and we'll be getting more progress. Next, we have The Fox by Cottage Garden St. Plinks, which looks like this. I will pop up a photo of where it was last time. And here it is now. So the needle minder is by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I don't remember if I said that I got 214 stitches on this. Um, the fabric is 32 count dusk. Lugana by Fibron Wim. This project has a total of 5,893 stitches. I have stitched 457, putting me at 7.8%.
And last but not least, for March Stitchy Madness, we have Silver Bells by Lindy Stitches, which looks like that. I will pop up a photo of where it was last time. I was able to get 529 stitches, so here is where we are now. The needle binder is from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. The fabric is 32 count white Lugana, and this is some that I got from Michael's, and it is very stiff. Um, but yeah, just lightly gone up. Get the stats up. So this one has, uh, this product has a total of 2,284 stitches. I have stitched 1,030, which puts me at 45.1% done. Out of those two projects, which were the Fox and Silver Bells, Silver Bells won. And so those are going to be my next eight projects that you will see again are those winners. I also had one other new start um, that was not a part of that. So I will go ahead and show you. This one was completely on a whim. I saw it on Instagram and had to get it. This is Haunted Hearts Mailbox by uh, Haunted Frames Tree. It is so cute. But there won't be a before photo. So here is what it looks like now. This project has a total of 1,360 stitches, and I have stitched 264, which puts me at 19.4% done. This is stitched on 32 count Abyss by Fabrics by Stephanie. That was a lot. <laughs> and I'm gonna have fun cleaning up this pile one more. Um, I think that's all the projects I have to show you. Uh, as far as plans go, I'm going to continue with um, the March Stitchy Madness for the rest of this month. After that, I'm going to cool down and try to actually finish some of these projects that I have been getting a lot of really good progress on. Um, it's really hard to get good progress and then put these down and work on something else the next day. So it'll be good to pick out some of these and hopefully um, finish a couple things. <laughs> um, I do have a tad bit of haul, so we will look at that. It is mostly fabric. <laughs> So I had a little kerfuffle with uh, my Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers Fabric of the Month. I had joined it forever ago and just started building up quite a bit of stash. So I went ahead and canceled, um, but I decided to restart at the beginning of this year. Um, to get some Ada. So I have a lot of linen, but I've really been enjoying stitching on like 18 count Ada. So I um, joined the club again. So anyway, I had like updated my address on PayPal, um, updated on the website, 
but I didn't notice that it shipped to the wrong address. Um, I had moved between when I had first been a member of the club until now. Um, I, I mean, it was my fault. It is what it is. Um, I went ahead and made sure everything was updated. So for February, I got the shipping notification and it still showed the wrong address. So I contacted them real fast. They fixed it. And then USPS happened. <laughs> they even offered to go ahead and resend me January's because I wasn't able to get that. Um, so they shipped them both. USPS, because they had originally created the shipping label with the wrong address, voided it and created, created a new one. Somehow, USPS had the tracking number linked to the old address, even though the actual sticker on it, on the package, had the address which was correct. So it literally just went in circles between like three different post offices around my general vicinity because someone would scan it and it would get sent to the post office local to where it was prior they would put it on a truck to deliver it. The guy would actually look at the sticker and see, well, that's not right, and toss it back to the post office. And it would just keep repeating the cycle about 10 times. It was ridiculous. If anyone had ever actually looked at it more than half a second, they would have <laughs> figured out that something was wrong. So I called the post office. They put in like a, a request. Um, for someone to actually go and pull the package. Someone pulled it and updated the tracking number. Well, it still didn't work. So I called again and finally someone was like, look, I'm just gonna put a new tracking number on this thing with the right address, call it done. And it finally got to me. <laughs> so needless to say, um, I'm really appreciative to um, Fiberlicious for resending me January's. Uh, even though it was probably my fault that it didn't uh, get sent to the right address. But just so no one else is like me, if you um, if you move and you're a member of the Fiberlicious Club, you do need to email them to have them update where they're going to send it to. Um, like your PayPal address or updating it on their website doesn't change anything. You need to actually contact them. So, lesson learned there, all fine and dandy. I just really appreciate still also getting the January fabric. But goodness gracious, <laughs> the post office. I thought for sure I was just like, you know, it's gonna be a nightmare. Anyway, we're all good now. So I have the January fabric of the month, which was Glimmering Dreams. This is 18 count Ada. I actually really like the uh, the way they have um, the sleeve. I really like that because you can cut the fabric, still fold it back up and put it in this. And I mean, like even itty bitty little pieces will still fit in the sleeve, so you can keep track of what they're a remnant of. But this is stunning, absolutely stunning. It's like a purple, purpley, bluey, green. It's even mostly purple and green. No, I mean, it depends. Depends on what area you're looking at, but it's stunning. I actually have this as a contender for um, the Deadly Aquarium Sale by Lola Crow. I don't know. It's not as blue as I would like, but I need to pull floss. Um, I have Blue Moon, which was a fabric of the month from Be Stitch Me recently. <laughs> I'm not sure which month. Um, and I think it's a little too dark though. Not that this is light, but I think it's just a little too dark of a blue. The one that I thought was absolutely perfect is only an eighth yard, so it's not enough. Um, but I don't know. We're gonna I'm gonna have to pull the floss and then go from there. The 
uh, February, five work of the month for me, uh, from Five Delicious though, is called Burning Woods Crackling Fire. which is red with some gray brown. Um, there's some orange spots. Yeah, really nice color. It's also really cool seeing the difference between how the different fabric types take the dye. Like, I love linen, but man, Ada is so much easier to stitch on when you just had a long day or it's kind of dark and you don't have the best lighting. I mean, you're in a car, it's so much easier to stitch on Ada. And it's still beautiful. So, just, I like having different options for different situations. So, that was my Fiberlicious. I apologize for the crinkling. I didn't want to get cat hair, cat hair all over this before. I showed you. But this is um, the Stitch Me's February fabric of the month. It's called We Can't Elope. I just giggled <laughs> when, when I read it. And as you can guess, it's like a really pretty orange melony color. Um, she has one that is like a bright neon orange, and this one is definitely more muted than that, but this is still a very bright orange. And that name is just, oh, it's so, oh, it's so cute. So, um, Forbidden Fiber Co. was having um, a grab bag sale for their fabrics. So I went ahead and got one of the linen grab bags. I got four different colors. And while I was on their website, I also picked up a couple of um, clearance pins, like enamel pins, because as you can tell from some of these needle monitors you've seen, I um, cut the backs off, dremel them smooth, and put on some magnets and make needle miters out of them. So uh, I got two of those. This one is a sparkly salty salt shaker, which I thought was cute. And the other one is, it looks like maybe a little chip bag or something. And it says, all I care about is snacks and like maybe free people. <laughs> so yeah, I got those. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to turn those into needle binders. Um, I'll show you the fabrics in a second, but I also got two, uh, these were like a free gift flosses. I don't know if they were mist dyes or what, but free floss. And then my four colors of fabric from the grab bag. So this was four um, eighth yard cuts of linen for just a little bit more than what you would pay for one quarter yard. When you're getting two. So it was a good deal. Um, uh, you don't get any say whatsoever though in uh, color or um, count. So consider that. <laughs> uh, I did feel like I got a decent mix. So these are the four colors. Um, two colors and two neutrals. This one is like a neutral gray, um, gray brown white neutral. Uh, that is called Slayer, and that's a 32 count. This one is a light to medium brown. 
It's not very mottled. It's a very good neutral. Uh, it's called Cobblestone, and it's a 28 count. This one is like an absolutely perfect, lightly mottled sky blue color. So you've got like patches of white and um, this like really bright blue all around. It look like, looks like clouds in the sky. It's called Wing Commander and it's 46 count. <laughs> I might go blind trying to use this, but at the very least, it is a light color. So it's not. Um, this, I actually got the box that this was dyed for, which was um, like a retro game box. So I have a, uh, I have a cut of this as well for, um, from that box. But now I've got some 46 counts. <laughs> And then um, this last one is Glass Elevator, which is, um, I have the Ada version for Holiday Quaker that I just showed you earlier. Uh, so it's like a, it's darker than Wing Commander, as you can tell, but it's also more modeled. Like this one goes between like the one color of blue and white. This one has a little bit of a darker blue, a little bit of the a lighter blue, not much white. It's mostly just between the two blues. But I really like the modeling in it. You can see on the front um, the little more model too. This one's also 46 count. <laughs> so um we will have fun trying to use that. I don't have anything past 40 count, so this is going to be new to me. And I really don't use 40 count that much, so. <laughs> but hey, it's good. It got me out of my comfort zone. And I'm certainly going to give them a try. I'm just really glad that they're not a really dark color. So that's all. That's all I have for all. It's a lot, it's a lot of pro projects, a lot of progress, even though it's, you know, bits and pieces on a lot of different projects. I have stitched over 4,000 stitches so far just on these projects. Um, it's, it's great. I feel really good about the progress I'm getting, even though I have been very busy. <laughs> so, I think, I think that's all the stitchy stuff that I have for you. I am going to do a quick, I always say that, and it's never quick. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about books next. <laughs> um, I do, I do have a, quite a few books actually, but they're all in like series. So I'm just going to do a series as a whole. So it's not going to be that, that, that crazy. Um, but yeah, if you are not here to hear anything about books, that's fine. Thank you so much for putting up with me through this <laughs> as I threw a lot at you. Um, if you have any questions about anything that you saw, want to know more about anything, just let me know. Um, I'll try to put as much information as I can down in the description box and I'll let you go. But if you want to hear about books, Let's go. Let me get my Goodreads up so I can remind myself exactly, exactly what all we read here. So firstly, and I think I had mentioned this in my last video, I did a reread of some Tamara Pierce books. So I started with a reread of the Song of the Lioness Quartet. Um, and I believe I talked about those in my last video, so we're not going to go any more into that. But then I, at that point, I had started um, reading the Immortals Quartet by Tamara Pierce. 
So I finished that quartet. <laughs> um, I really only have good things to say about just about everything I've read by Tamara Pierce. So there's there's not a lot to uh, <laughs> to go on there, but I will give a little recap of the Immortals Quartet. Um, they follow the main character called Dane, who has a odd type of magic that a lot of people haven't heard of. Uh, fantasy novels. These are all fantasy novels, <laughs> um, and she is able to uh, talk to animals. Um, she can heal them. And later on in the series, she can transform herself into animals. So it's all about her, the friends that she makes, both four-legged and two-legged. It's the sweetest thing. Um, all of her adventures. Uh, she helps prevent a war, she um, does some more minor scale things such as saving uh, a pack of wolves from uh, uncaring humans, <laughs> uh, different things, but it's all great. Uh, throughout the quartet she She's a young, young to mid teenager uh, early on in the quartet, and then she gets, uh, she grows up. I believe it really only goes into like her young adult years, like 18 or something. So maybe from like 14 to 18 is the entire quartet. So she's relatively young, but they are definitely the type of books that are not written for any one type of audience. So anyone can read these books and get something out of them. Lovely, absolutely wonderful. So then I went on into um, Tamara Pierce's Circle of Magic Quartet. Again, like I was doing like a whole comfort reread of all the Tamara Pierce books. <laughs> so, um, the Circle of Magic Quartet is, uh, the first two quartets that I read were from One World, which is based in Tortal. Um, this, the Circle of Magic um, Quartet and all of those are based in a different world. Um, actually, I don't know the world name. I can tell you the country name. <laughs> anyway, they're based in Imelon. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that's right. Tortal is actually just the, the main country of the others. Anyway. Okay, yeah, so Tortal and Imelon. Um, so two different, completely different characters, completely different magic rules, um, completely different universes. So switch gears here. And the Circle of Magic Quartet follows these um, four very different young mages as they discover that they have magic, first off, because, again, it's a very uh, unheard of, well, not really unheard of, they didn't know they had magic. And they learn that they do, they learn how to control it and not let it control them. Um, they all come from very different backgrounds. One of them uh, was a thief in the slums of a big city. One is a merchant, a daughter, a daughter of a merchant house. One is a noble and one is, um, she's called a She's called a traitor in the world, traitor, um, but yeah, <laughs> um, but honestly, the description of them, it seems a lot like um, Romani or Gypsy culture. 
but they're called traitors in this world. Um, she has a lot to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they all come from very different backgrounds, um, but they form a friendship. They um, learn a lot as they mature. I will say that the difference in this quartet versus the um, the Tortal ones is there's a lot. Each book in this first quartet of the Circle of Magic is based mostly uh, around events central to one of the four young mages. Uh, of course, they're all in it and they all help each other, but the one that's doing the character growth is the one that's like that book is for. And that it's really interesting because you you're getting like a a bigger more viewpoints of i guess i i don't know it it's different in that aspect but one other difference is i think the characters are overall more immature <laughs> i think that i really loved this quartet as a child and as an adult i still like it but there are times where especially one of the characters, I'm just like, oh my god, shut up. And it kind of knows that in the book. Like, even the characters, like, she admits that she knows she's whining, but she can't help herself. And it just sort of tells you, oh yeah, I mean, she is like 12. So the other ones that I've read by Tamara Pierce, the characters seem I wouldn't say they seem like they're adults because they are younger but they don't have that same you don't read them and automatically be like oh yeah I'm reading from like a child's point of view here in this one there's not a lot of that but there there are a few times where it's just uh... <laughs> but overall though I think that the um that they're worth it they're also short. So like each of the quartets in this, um, for, from Tamara Pierce are what I would say would be like one and a half, one really long one or one and a half long fantasy novels. So, um, I listened to the audiobooks for these, which are great. Um, a lot of Tara Pierce's books are done by full cast audio, which, as it says, are like full cast productions um, of her books, and they're great. It's so entertaining. Each of the characters have a different, um, each of the main characters have a different voice actor, and the minor characters you can tell that the same voice, sometimes you can tell that the same voice actor is doing them, but they do different like inflections and um, it's, it's not as obvious. Like, sure, you can tell it might be the same person, but it doesn't, I don't know if I'm making any sense here. <laughs> you might can tell, like one of the voice actors has like a very uh, distinct, It's not really a lisp, but you you can kind of tell from the way that they speak that um, it's the same person doing a couple different characters in the book. But they're not, they don't sound exactly the same, so it's very easy to keep track of the characters as you're listening. And yeah, I would listen to these during my commute. Each book in the quartet's only about five hours. Um, and yeah, so I would say a really good, <laughs> a really good long fantasy novel is easily between 15 and 20. So these, all four of them is like one big book. <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, uh, I digress there. Um, each of these, so each of the circle of magic ones, again, is based on one of the young mages. And the first one is about um, the noble, and she is able to, um, her magic is based around weaving, spinning, fabric, cloth, thread, that sort of thing. Um, the second one is uh, based around the merchant girl who is a weather mage. So her magic is tied to lightning, um, wind, uh, the seas, um, the earth itself, I guess, kind of, uh, stuff like that. The third one is um, centered around the trader girl, and she is a uh, metal mage, so like a blacksmith mage. So she can work magic around different metals and stone and things that come out of the earth. Then the last one is based around the thief boy, and his magic is plant magic. So um, things that grow, green things. My absolute favorite is actually the fourth one. Not because, no, I mean, it's, it's really not even about a lot of growing things. Like the, the fourth one, they are attempting to find the cure to a plague. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. I have never read anything like it in any, any fantasy novel I've ever read. It's about like using magic and science at the same time to find like a cure to a disease. And it is, oh, I was so, I, I loved it as a child. I was always fascinated by that. I loved it reading it again as an adult. Like, oh, Cool Sammer. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely love it. Um, now, there are other books by Tamara Pierce that I have not read. Um, I've always been to, but never made it past a certain point, I guess. So uh, I am actually going ahead and starting to read the next of the... It's following these same characters from the Circle of Magic Quartet. As they get older, it's a different quartet, though. Um, I believe it's called the Circle Opens Quartet. So I'm continuing on in that world. I will give you updates as we go. Um, that's all I have to say about Tamara Pierce's stuff at the moment. <laughs> you will hear about her books again. Uh, as I keep going. The next one, though, and this is a good one. I have two other things to talk about. This one and, and then one more after this one. Um, the Radium Girls. So this is a book by Kate Moore. This is a nonfiction book, which is completely not up my normal alleys. Um, this talks about the uh, the women dial painters around the early 1900s was it world I think it was World War one might have been World War two don't quote me on that um but anyway radium is radioactive and glows in the dark. You can use it to make a paint that these women would then paint on um, dials, which could then be used like clocks, uh, which could then be used for watches, for household clocks, for uh, all sorts of different dials in airplanes, uh, it was a, a huge industry. Um, it talks about the backstory of 
radium as people were just discovering this new um, element <laughs> thing <laughs> and how they thought it was a wonder drug. People would put it in everything. They had no earthly idea that it was dangerous and the people who did know really didn't talk about those dangers because everyone wanted a piece of the, the hot new industry. <laughs> so these women, the way that they would paint these dials was by taking the paintbrush, uh, using their mouth to form a really tight point, dipping it in the paint, and then like writing a number. Then they would put it back in their mouths to make another point, again, dip in the paint with the radioactive substance and write another number number on the dial. Um, you can kind of guess now with our modern history of, uh, I mean, our modern knowledge of radioactive substances where this goes, but um, it talks about how these women were so young and vibrant and at the beginning, I wouldn't really say exploited, but then whenever things started to happen affecting their health, the struggle, it talks about the struggle to be listened to, um, to be heard, the, the great lengths that these companies went to to keep the women and their um, anyone who was saying that radium's bad uh, to keep them in the dark, <laughs> in the dark. See, <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it it was fascinating. It was heartbreaking. It was infuriating. It was very well written. <laughs> I I did really appreciate how the author didn't just focus on, oh, these companies were just greedy and um, didn't care about the women, which that is a good part of it, but a lot of these people who worked in these companies as well also died as the history of this goes on because they really did not think it was dangerous and they weren't really using protection and precautions either, and so they also died. So there was a lot of um, partial partial ignorance, but a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of, because they thought that uh, the minuscule amount of radium that these women were using to make the paint was not enough to be dangerous. So even after they thought that, oh, okay, yes, there are some dangers with radium, the people who worked um, with more concentrated radium or like lead lined aprons and stuff like that, but they thought that the amount these women used in their paint was so minuscule that it couldn't negatively impact them. Uh, so there's, there was so much that went into this, um, and it was very enlightening. No pun intended on that one. <laughs> so, highly recommend. Uh, Kate Moore has another book called uh, The Women, The Woman They Could Not Silence, I believe. Uh, that's on my to be read very soon list because. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the Radium Girls. Um, so I'm also going to read that other one by the same author. Okay, last one. Then I'll let you go. <laughs> um, I have been reading a series by Dave Wellington that started with the book 23 Bullets. And the last one that I just read. It was not 20, it was 13 bullets. This one is 23 hours. 
but let's see what it is. Okay, so the first one's 13 bullets, the second one is 99 coffins, the third one is Vampire Zero, and the one that I just finished is 20, uh, 23 hours. The last one in the series is called 32 Fangs, and that is what I will be reading very soon. Um, I have it checked out, ready to go, finish off the series. This is a vampire thriller horror novel series. Uh, these are not your cute romantic vampires. Uh, these are not even your hot bad boy vampires. These are, I'm going to rip you into pieces and bite, like, you know, suck every last drop of blood out of your innards type vampires. <laughs> they are just straight up um, ravenous, monstrous beasts. So the uh, this follows a woman named Laura Caxton. Um, and it starts out with her partner, um, who she attempts to help track down, um, these vampires and eliminate them. There are not that many. So for the main, um, there's like one really, really old vampire who she has been there through the entire series and this last book is her final showdown with the uh, lead character. The others sort of come and go, things change, um, but it's always leading towards the end game of we're trying to kill this one last really old vampire so that we can drive them to extinction. And you've got some like newborn kind of stupid vampires because they haven't learned yet um, how to be wily and keep like <laughs> keep one step ahead of the authorities. Uh, this Laura Caxton is um, she works for the police, uh, like a, a segment of the police. So she, there's a part of like a police procedural aspect to it. Not a lot. Uh, enough that it, it, that's not really my thing. Um, if I'm going to do a police procedural, I'm going to watch it, not read it. Reading it just seems kind of boring. But there's not a lot of that in this, so it's still still up my alley. Um, these are just really good. I'm going to turn kind of turn my brain off and just read some gruesome thriller. <laughs> so um, I think I've given all but one of them four stars. Um, and that other one was five. But for the most part, they're like solid four stars. Um, they're entertaining. They're interesting. They're, I would say, kind of unique. I've I've certainly not read anything like them, but I wouldn't say that th this is like the genre I gravitate towards anyway. Um, but yeah, they're they're fun. They're interesting. Great to read around Halloween, which was when I started the first one, and then I've just been keeping reading the series since then. Uh, so clearly, they uh, did something right to keep me keep me reading the series. Okay, now that's it. That's really it. I'm done. That's everything. Thank you so much if you stuck with me through my rambles. I always go on more than I to when we're talking about books. When I'm talking about my whips, I think I have like a set, here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> For books, I just kind of ramble. I'm sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> I will try to get better. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Every comment, every like and subscribe means so much to me. Um, especially the comments. Like, you don't even have to subscribe. Just leave me a comment. It means the world to me to know that someone heard what I had to say and has something to respond. And I, I, I love that. Um, so yeah, uh, I've had a lot of unfortunate personal events going on that kept me from filming sooner. So hopefully I, sh I should be back sooner. But if we have to do monthly, we have to do monthly and there'll just be longer updates, I guess. But, but we'll see. I would really like to stick to about three weeks. Um, but I'll see you when I see you, I guess. <laughs> okay, thanks guys. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, night, morning, uh, whenever this is that you're watching this, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!